Hello and welcome, it's Connor here from Luxia Smart Homes and today I'm going to talk to you about automations, what they are, how they work and how we actually program them. So what is an automation? Well, an automation is actually defined as the technique of making an apparatus, a process or a system operate automatically. Now, a great example of where automations can come into play with a smart home is light. Now, this is a very basic automation and it's one of the first things that people do when they build a smart home and that is automatic lighting. With a smart home, you can take a smart light, whether that's via a smart bulb or a smart switch, and you can take a motion sensor and combine the two together so that when someone walks into a room, the light automatically turns on. And then when they leave that room, the light will automatically turn off. So we've got loads of different automations here in front of us and they do all sorts of different things from basic like closing the blinds and um, bin reminder. So reminding me what bin it is that needs to be put out, um, bathroom motion, shower warning. Uh, we've got empty house, so when the house is empty, what does the smart home do? Well, it turns all the lights off, it makes sure that any appliances that have been left on are turned off, it switches off the TV, it does a load of different tasks, and again, you can see the list goes on and on and on. So, loads of different things here, but we're going to dive into that basic automation that we talked about earlier, which is the lighting. So we're now here in the automation page where we can actually create a new automation. So what you see here is a completely blank, clean slate um, where we can now build our own automation. And what we're going to do in a second is we're going to build an automation for lights. So like we discussed earlier, having lights turn off and on depending on whether someone is in a room. But firstly, it's important to know what makes an automation. And there are three things that make up an automation. You've got your trigger, your condition, and your action. Now, not all of these are actually necessary. Only two of them are required to really build an automation, and that is your trigger and your action. You must have a trigger and you must have an action in order for an automation to work. If you don't have one of these things, nothing is gonna happen, okay? However, the conditions are optional, all right? So you don't have to have a condition in your automation. For example, if you wanted the light to turn on when someone walked in the room, your trigger would be the motion sensor and your action would be the light turning on. No condition required, you've just got a simple trigger and a simple action. However, if you wanted to step things up, you could add in a condition, and that condition could be for light level. So when someone walks in a room, it will check the light level to make sure that it's dark enough to warrant turning the light on. If it is, it will then go to the action and turn on the light. So let's start by building a very simple lighting automation. So we need to begin with our trigger. And as you can see, we have a big list of all of the different triggers we can use from the state of the sun to uh, what time it is, zones, so whether or not somebody is home or maybe they're at work, um, calendar events, all sorts of different things. But all we want to use is the device trigger. And the device trigger we're going to use is the office occupancy sensor. Now we get to select the attribute of the sensor that we want to use as the trigger. Now we want to use the present attribute, so we want to detect office occupancy sensor present present. Okay, that's hard to say. So we want to detect when someone is present. So that is our trigger. Now at the minute, this would work, this would fire. However, nothing would actually happen because we've not implemented an action. We just want call service because all we want to do is we want to call on the light turn on service. So we're gonna go light, and we're looking for light turn on. As you can see, you can also do light turn off and light toggle, but we just wanna turn it on. And we now get to select our target. So we're gonna choose an entity, and we're gonna choose the office bulb here. And then when we select our entity, we get a big list of attributes that we can use. Okay, so as you can see, there's loads of different types of color attributes. Uh, color temperatures, different brightness attributes. We're going to keep it simple and we're just going to put a little transition on this. So we're going to do like a fade of one second so the light will just gradually fade up and it just makes it a bit nicer so it's not just snapping on the minute that you walk in the room. We're then going to add a color temperature here and we're just going to cool them somewhere over here. Now you could also do color temperature by Kelvin as well, which you could do two and a half thousand. So that's like a warm white. And then we're gonna set a brightness and we wanna turn it up to 100% there. Whoops, I did it. 100% and that's all we're gonna do. 
okay, so simple transition, setting the colour temperature and the brightness. And that's it. A very, very basic automation. So if we were to save this, and we were to just call this, we're just going to call this testing for the minute, this would now work, all right? When we walk into the office, the occupancy sensor would detect us, and then the light would turn on. Very, very simple. However, this light will now stay on indefinitely. Okay, so even when we leave the room, it's going to stay on because we've not set anything up within this automation to tell the light to turn back off when we leave. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this trigger up here, but we're going to change it from um, present, present to present, not present. So someone is not here. All right, they have left the room. And then we're also going to duplicate our call service, but we're going to turn this to a light off service now and choose our entity again, which is going to be our office, if I can spell properly. And then we're going to do a transition. And I like to actually add kind of like a 30 seconds, see if you can just type it, 30 second transition in here. And what this does, it just means that if for whatever reason the motion sensor stops detecting you, but you are actually still in the room, so maybe you're sat at a desk or maybe you're washing up or something like that, and the light begins to fade out, you know that it stopped detecting you. So you can do, you know, little dance, wave your arms around, and it will detect you again and bring the light back up. Now, save it, and will that work? No, it's not going to work, because we've got two different triggers here, and we've got two different actions. Now, we haven't told the action which trigger to listen to. So when we detect presence, okay, is the light turning on or is it turning off? Okay, we've not told the automation what we want it to do based on the trigger that happens. So come down here and we can now edit the ID and we can give it a trigger ID. And we're gonna call this motion, okay? And we're gonna call our other one no motion okay so now these have some identification to them we've got a motion trigger and a no motion trigger now what we're going to do now here is we're actually going to get rid of our call services because we want to do it slightly differently now we want to add an action and we want to add a choose action now in here we can add an infinite number of options to our choose action and we can also add a default action. So if it doesn't match any of the options, it will just use a default action. But all we want is two options. And we're gonna start with option one. Now in our first option, we're gonna add a condition and we're gonna use a triggered by condition. So a triggered by condition allows us to select which one of our two triggers we want to use. In this case, we wanna use our motion trigger. So now we can add an action and we can add our call service action of light turn on. So we can turn on our office light when motion is detected. Add a transition here, again, one second, and then color temperature, 2500K, and brightness, 100%. Cool. So we've got our very first option, which is gonna be triggered by motion, which you can see here. Now for our second one, we're gonna add triggered by, but we're gonna use no motion. And then we're gonna add an action, and that action is going to be, you guessed it, light turn off. Add an entity, office bulb, and again, just adding a 30 second transition on this bulb to give us a bit of a heads up. So there we have it. We now have a more advanced automation that actually knows what it's doing. So now we've added identifications to our triggers and we have used those identifications within our action to decide what we want to happen. So we can now save that automation and that will work perfectly and it will do exactly what we want it. When presence is detected, it will turn on the light and when presence is no longer detected, it will turn the light off. Now we can dive even deeper into this if we wanted to, and we can add extra conditions that maybe check light levels. So we could go into device, we could go and add our office occupancy sensor, and then we can add our lux level. So uh, office occupancy sensor, illuminance, lux, illuminance. And we can say if it's below 25, turn the light on. So when motion is triggered, it will then check to see if the light level is below 25. 
If it is, it will turn on the office bulb. So yeah, there we have it. A very brief look at the lighting automation within our smart home. A little look at what automations are, what the purpose of them is, and how they work. I hope you find this video interesting and helpful, and I hope it gives you a little bit of an insight into what it is we do and how we actually operate. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next video.